Hi, I'm Roger Mashad. At Franklin Templeton Investments, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the resources that can help make higher education more affordable. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, the heart of academic medicine, the Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Cone Resnick, providing accounting, tax, and advisory services for more than 90 years, and by MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. The Special Olympics USA Games will be hosted by New Jersey during June of 2014. 3,500 athletes will compete in 16 sports with the support of thousands. Joining me here in the studio to discuss the positive impact that the 2014 Games will have on New Jersey and the larger community we have, Aaron Allen, who is a very talented Special Olympic athlete who will be competing in volleyball during the games. Did you give the thumbs up? I like that. Sharon <laughs> Allen, who is in fact uh, Aaron's very proud mom and a dedicated supporter of Special Olympics. Our good friend TJ Nelligan, chairman and CEO of the 2014 Special Olympics USA Games. And Alan Lambert with us many times, chief diversity officer at PSEG, the head of the PSEG Foundation. Um, and also PSEG is a founding partner of the 2014 games. I want to thank all of you for joining us. This is big, this is huge. New Jersey, uh, across the nation, across the world. And as we roll this video, TJ, uh, of the games, what it's going to look like, talk to us. We're seeing the, the light being, the, the flame being lit. Talk to us about why this is such a big deal. This is a, a huge event for the state of New Jersey. It's a huge event for Special Olympics in general, nationally. It's going to be the most innovative, inspiring event to ever be in the state of New Jersey. We're going to have 3,500 athletes, 10,000 volunteers, 100,000 spectators are going to show up here for a week. You know, we've been planning this event for over a year. The athletes are going to leave here at the end of that week with life-changing moments and things that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And uh, to help us understand this, because you and I have known each other a long, long time, you got involved in this how? And because I, of whom? I got involved in this because of my son, Sean, who you know very well, and he's a uh, basketball oh, player like Aaron. Oh, is that like Sean Aaron. right there at the governor's oh, podium? There he is. We're looking a little comfortable at the governor Christie's <laughs> podium. And that was... Uh, I know you, son. That's right. That was the day the Athlete Congress of New Jersey nominated Governor Christie to be our honorary chair. He's a great ambassador for the state of New Jersey, and now we have him on our team as the honorary chair of the games. He accepted governor that. Governor Christie is. That's right. Actually, yep. we have a shot of that, too. And, and Sean's been a part of this for a long time. Alan, put things in perspective, having PSEG be the, um, the founding partner, if you will, why? First of all, the quality of the games, the athletes. We feel like New Jersey is the place that all of these athletes should come to. We want to show off our athletes, inspire not just the athletes, but the volunteers. It's a great place for teens of all, at all ages to participate, to coach, to play, um, to draw attention to the diversity in the state. It's Before I move over to Aaron, he can talk about his volleyball expertise, which I know he wants to talk about. There's another part of this, Alan, because there's a big economic piece, I know, millions coming in, a lot of ancillary benefits. But the, the other part of this that I know is big for you, Alan, the National Youth Leadership Summit at the Games. What is it, and what's the PSEG connection? It's a program that I think Special Olympics nationally, but New Jersey, has put together to actually put athletes from Special Olympics together with high school athletes to work together to enhance skills, to develop coaching skills on both sides, to really bring the best forward for all the athletes. Very exciting program. Um, really teaches kids to work together to develop the best for all kids. And by the way, Alan headed up the uh, Special Olympics in New York State, and in fact, uh, in the late, late 80s, so there's been a long connection here. Aaron, let me ask you, volleyball your sport? Yes. Favorite sport? Basketball. Basketball. When you first got involved in Special Olympics, why did you do it? To meet new friends, like Sean Morgan, and a lot of my friends do it sometimes. You love it? 
I do love it. Yeah. Competing at these games, what does it mean to you? Competing is walking like teamwork. Not you lose, you win. Don't give up. You you gotta try to try your best a lot. Like I tried playing volleyball all my life, and now I'm right here. I'm happy I'm going to the state games in my hometown. I'm happy I have make new friends. I'm happy um, I'm sitting with you. I'm sitting right here talking to you. I'm happy I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> we could do this all day. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Want to jump in? I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, I think Mr. Adubato was asking you too, besides meeting new friends, what, what was the feeling that almost puts you to tears sometimes? What is that word that begins with a P? Proud. What is it? Proud. 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 What are you proud of? I'm happy I am make the team. I'm, I was getting really nervous. I have got really nervous I not make the team. I want, this is my chance. I go for it. I, I not go for it. I don't have another chance to do it in my life. This is a special volleyball team, isn't it? Yeah. What makes it a special team? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's Coach, a unified volleyball it, team. It what does that mean, by the way? Unified mm -hmm. means that it takes athletes, Special Olympians, and pairs them with other athletes from colleges. <laughs> um, and it really it brings, it exemplifies some of the program that you're working on and bringing the community together and See, that's pretty big. Unified sports is a, is a big deal nationwide in Special Olympics, and it's a big push now. We have unified basketball coming up in January, February, March at Montclair State, at Rowan. And it not only, you know, this movement has magical powers. Unified. <clears throat> the whole Special Olympics movement has magical powers. The unified piece not only changes the Special Olympics people's and athletes' lives, but these college kids see life through different glasses. You know, you have college students who come together, they play competitive basketball with their unified Special Olympics athlete partners, and you see a change in them. And you see that acceptance and that camaraderie like all of us had growing up and playing mm -hmm. sports. So, you know, I've seen that happen and you've seen that happen with Sean where, you know, he looked at his shoes, he had no confidence. Today, he walks around like he's, uh, you know, the mayor <laughs> and has, you know, great time with his friends. They work. Yeah. His, his friend Bobby is the chairman of the Athlete Congress. They work at a restaurant, the Moffitt Lynn, two days a week. They work at Nelligan Sports. They're in charge of our accounts receivable. And they take more pride in their job, and it means more to them than probably any employee we have. I mean, it's just, it is a life-changing movement, I call it. It's not, it's not a nice little it's sports thing that people said. It's not a program, Ellen, it's a movement. Ellen wants to jump in, I could tell. Oh, you, <laughs> sometimes you take for granted that sports are just about competition. Here the level of competition is high, but the level of achievement is higher for all of us. I'd love to play on your volleyball team. <laughs> I mean, there's something about participating in sports with people across the board who actually care about the quality of the game, what people take home out of it, um, the winning, mm. equally important, but just the skill involved. It brings us all together in a very different way. Alan, do you think Particularly, I don't want to be overly philosophical here, but I, I worry sometimes about, um, I look at our own kids and, and many others that are consumed by social media and, and their own worlds, they get caught up in their own world and, and they don't interact with each other in a very human or special way that it allows them to be particularly empathetic or caring. And I always think about Special Olympics as a way that forces, it really forces you out of that. Am, am I making too much of that? No, I, you, you hit it absolutely right on the head, Steve, in the sense that it, it definitely brings kids out. It creates, as TJ was saying, like Sean, the confidence to step out, talk to people that you don't know, uh, interact in a community and be successful, and you know what? Make the community a better place what, as well. What changes have you seen in this guy? Um, a lot more confidence. Uh, to go out and talk to people. I don't think he would tease quite as easily if he didn't know you. Um, even as soon as I met him today, he started teasing me. 
<laughs> That's tremendous confidence. I like That's that. Absolutely. And, and through Special Olympics, he's gained that. And the fact to go up and meet other kids and work with younger ones and not be intimidated by that, um, he has no qualms to do that. It's going to be wow. Boy, it's going to be big. Describe what people are going to see. By the way, you want, do you want more volunteers? No, you've had enough? Yeah. No, people can go on our website and volunteer. By the way, it's been up the whole time. We're going to end so. up with 10,000 volunteers in all different what are you capacities. Do with them? We, we have a lot <laughs> of need for different do. people. So great. <laughs> we've got <laughs> officials. We've got to make sure this guy over here is following all the rules. So we've got the officials. What do you mean, these officials? Well, we've got officials, we've got scorekeepers, we've got coaches, we've got people that are just going to be volunteering in general. Let's you know, do this again. Tenth, folks, by the way, June. 14th to the 21st, 2014. Uh, economic impact of the 2014 USA Games, huge, Special Olympics. Um, 10,000 volunteers, 3,500 athletes, over 1,000 coaches and delegates. Uh, Governor Christie is the honorary chair. PSE and G is the, PSEG is the founding partner. Economic impact. Well, the economic impact, the Mid-Jersey Center for Economic Development did an independent study, just like they do for any big-time events that are coming to cities, and the economic impact that this event will have on the state of New Jersey is almost $120 million. So not only is it the human spirit and all the great things that Aaron and all the other Special Olympics athletes are going to find when they get here, this is a good thing for the economy in the state of New Jersey as well. Right. And number two, you know, the corporate... Uh, acceptance and we went out three years ago and started raising money. I remember when you started. We're going to end up over 20 million dollars because of companies like PSE&G. You know, Ralph LaRosa, the CEO of PSE&G, he didn't just write a check. He was there on day one when the committee came in to decide if New Jersey should host the games. He and other corporate leaders from the state came in. We had over 100 letters to back say. Up. Back up, TJ. A lot of places wanted this. Put that in perspective. Yeah, there was five or six different uh, states that wanted the games. They came down to us and uh, Boston. And thanks to the support, really, I think the difference maker was we changed the model and changed the paradigm on how you run a charity event. This right. is a sports marketing event. We have a, just signed 21st Century Fox, Fox News, Fox Sports, Fox Sports One is going to have a nationwide television show telling the story about Special Olympics throughout the country. They're going to tie us in with the Super Bowl. They're going to tie us in right. with all their programming. So what does that mean? That means that the tens of thousands of potential athletes who don't know our story, who don't know how Special Olympics can change their child's life, mm -hmm. are now going to know the story about Special Olympics. We don't have the money in Special Olympics to go out and spend it to tell people how right. great it is. We have zero. So now through the partnership of, we have nine founding partners at a million dollars. Right. We have 20 some odd companies between 100,000 and 500,000. But more important than raising the money to me was we're only serving, you know, two or three errands out of a hundred that could be participating. Right. Now they're going to hear the story. Now they're going to have an opportunity to join. We'll have twice as many athletes throughout this country in another couple of years versus the 800,000 that are there today. Alan, what do you think longer term? Again, the economic impact is huge. The human impact is what it is. But from a business point of view, I mean, as the head of the foundation, right? right. Every, virtually everyone, including us, I mean, I, I say full disclosure, but I shouldn't because, you know, because Ralph LaRosa spots on the end of this show as well. <laughs> uh, you'll see it for, for Special Olympics, yep. and you, you've been one of the original underwriters of public broadcasting in the state for a long time and long-standing supporters. How do you make a decision as to what you're going to underwrite, what you're going to support, and, and why this investment? So we are in people's homes. We serve people with energy. We don't sell a product. And it's really important that we support people in the state. And the athletes, the special athletes in the state are a pretty important group. Do you ever stand on the field in the summer rooting on your favorite baseball team? It's incredible. This year I'll root for volleyball. But right. it's an incredible feeling across the communities to bring people together. And I think for us it's probably one of the best things we can fund. Because not only do our employees volunteer and get to be out there, but the communities where we're, we're serving get to be out there as well. Folks, go on the website right now. Um, it's a terrific website. You're going to find out important information about the games that go on from June 14th to the 21st, uh, 2014. 16 sports, right, TJ? Uh, promote social inclusion. We talked about um, the other thing I just want to be clear on, the sports. They said 16 sports. Real quick uh, description, TJ, volleyball, uh, basketball. Basketball, softball, we're having baseball for the first time as a de demonstration sport. We're doing the triathlon for the first time as a demonstration sport. Gymnastics, volleyball, 
uh, swimming, track and field, all 16 sports at a world-class facilities, by the way. You know, Princeton University is a great host. They're hosting us for swimming in a, the same pool that the NCAA championships were That's held. Tremendous. The track and field at uh, Princeton will be used. You know, the opening ceremonies, the uh, New Jersey Devils and the Prudential Center are giving us the building for free. All kinds of partnerships. We, Sharon, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do, the other parents you interact with, mm -hmm. I mean, this is taking New Jersey Special Olympics, you know, if you know, for a long time to a whole different level. What impact has this had? And the kind of conversations you and, and the other parents have as to what's happening right now, what are they saying? It's very exciting. Uh, it, it spotlights a state that doesn't always get the spotlight in, in such a positive way, but the fact that it's got delegations from all the states coming, the fact that it brings the state together. But for the athletes, for your kids who are the athletes is where, really where I'm going. It's really great, great competition. I mean, they're going to rise to the level, and they get to be delegates to show their state off to other people. But the competition is a big part of it. <laughs> um, being hosts in this state is another part of it. And ambassadors, they're, they truly are, are ambassadors. Am I nervous? Yeah. Uh, probably a little bit. Are you nervous? <laughs> Bring my A game. I don't, care, I don't care the people watching in Massachusetts. <laughs> Every people want an amount of truth, but you ain't game. I will, oh, I can hunt you down and find you and beat yourself. <laughs> so if the people in Massachusetts, they better bring their A game because um, Aaron is ready for it. Aaron Allen is a uh, superstar athlete. He is uh, be playing in the 2014 uh, Special Olympics USA Games in volleyball. It'll be, uh, as I said, June 14th. He just did a promo. You better use that, TJ. <laughs> to uh, the 14th to the 21st. I can't beat that. It'll be terrific. Go on the website. Uh, Aaron and some other yeah. terrific athletes will be competing. We, we are proud to be your media partner in public broadcasting. And uh, I just, uh, I'm just proud to be a part of it in a very small way of what everything, everything that's been going on. We wish you nothing but the best. Thank we know you. you're going to represent all of us um, in a very proud way. And uh, I know you and all the other parents will be proud. Thank you for being a founding member. And thank you for everything you're doing. And, and give Sean our best. Thank you, yes, Steve. Sir. Stay right Check there, everyone. You. Stay tuned. We'll be right back yes, sir, right after this. You better watch out in Massachusetts. <laughs> If you would like more information on this program, or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at caucusnj.org, or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. Michael Struziak, New Jersey Sharing Network volunteer and transplant recipient. Good to see you, Michael. You're on the uh, air with us for the first time here. Yes, thank you very much for having me on today and promoting this cause that's so deep in, in my heart. Yeah, let's talk about the, we'll talk about the cause in a second. Let's talk about you first, your experience. Um, six years ago, what happened well, for you? let me take you back about nine and a half years ago. Uh, I was a type one diabetic. I said I was, because now I'm not any longer. Um, what happened was I went to my regular routine doctor. I was a type one diabetic, and she found out that my kidneys were failing. Sent me to Bergen Hypertension to do a test and see what's going on. And they did find out that the kidney was failing, and they figured, well, the type 1 diabetes took its toll and destroyed the kidney. Well, they had to put a fistula in my right arm and get me ready for dialysis, and I went on diets. Before they did the fistula, they did a, um, a scan of my body to see how my circulatory system was and the kidneys. And they found out that it wasn't the type 1 diabetes that destroyed my kidneys. I had renal cancer. You had renal cancer? Yes. And what happened then was uh, they used the Da Vinci method it's a robotics, took out the uh, kidney, and the other kidney, I only had one, and I started dialysis three days a week, three and a half hours each day, and I was on multiple diets. One was a dialysis diet, no potassium, no phosphorus. Um, the other diet was my diabetes diet, uh, which caused a lot of problems on dialysis. Describe that life. Uh, life was terrible at that point. Life was terrible. And then the worst part is I couldn't drink any water. Couldn't drink water. Couldn't drink water. I didn't urinate for three years. So That was your life? That was my life. Well, not all of it. I was taking care of my mom, who, after my father died, they were in, they were, they were in love. My daughters will always tell it. And my dad on his deathbed saved... Four daughters. Four daughters, yes. My dad on his deathbed saved his pair for my mom from lunch. Mm -hmm. When he passed away, my mom had multiple strokes. 
and she was living in my living room, paralyzed from the neck down, with dementia, Parkinson's, and I had a hospital bed in my living room, and I took care of her during this period also. While you were going through this? While I was going through this. Six years ago, what happens? Six years ago, on September 11th at night, and they always called you at night, it's always 2 o'clock in the morning, I got a call from, uh, from the sh I guess it's the sharing network or the hospital. Right. Hi, Mike, how you feeling? We should make it clear we're doing this cooperation with the New Jersey Sharing Network. You see their information on the bottom of the screen. You want to find out more? You want to participate? Um, you want to consider being a part of the program? Um, log on, find out, go ahead. Um, they gave me a call and they said, Mike, we have an offering. And this was two o'clock in the morning. It was my 12th offering on September 11th. Hmm. And it was a young girl, they told me, and she died in a car accident. Well, you don't sleep the whole night. This is Kristen? This is Kristen, my donor, Kristen Teresa O'Hara. She's a teenage girl? 19 years old. And I had two daughters that were 19 years old at the same time, and one was Kelly and one was Katie. And it, it's, it, it hits home. And this is Kristen. Kristen, she died in a car accident on the way to visit a friend who just had a baby. And three of the four girls passed away in South Jersey by Jackson, around the corner from her high school, Jackson Memorial High School. Her, her organs wind up saving your life, okay, and, and then I think many, many other people as well. Absolutely. Every, she was, she's my angel. She saved so many people's lives. I knew the heart recipient. There was somebody who got a double lung transplant. Another person got her liver, and it just, it just adds on how many people that she saved and made the quality of life much better. Could you, again, take a look at the website do yourself a favor and everyone around you log on and get more information right now that's why we're doing this program once you got Kristen's kidney describe what happened to your life well in the recovery room and I always tell the story the nurses were looking at me and I was trying to look to the side look to the side and the one nurse got concerned what's wrong and the other nurse said show him the catheter bag the Foley bag I didn't urinate for three years now I was. Now I had a brand new pancreas. I have no more diabetes. I don't need dialysis. I could eat cake, candy, things that I never had in my whole life. It changed my life. Plus everything else that happened to me too. Mm -hmm. Now I was able to walk my daughter down the aisle. It was almost surreal because my daughter didn't think I was going to live hmm. to get that far. And I remember sitting at the, um, setting it all up and we were at the caterers doing a tasting and she started crying. And the, and, the, and the head person who was setting it up said, what's the matter, what's the matter? She goes, I never thought my father would get to see this day. I only weighed 120 pounds, now I'm 175. How about your two grandchildren? Oh, I got little Francesca Grace. <laughs> She's, is that them right there? Yeah, that's them right there. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, that's them right there. <laughs> and, uh, and little Rocco Anthony. Rocco that, Anthony. Rocco Anthony De Laurentiis. He has a oh great name. And he was just born a little bit over two months ago. Oh, my God. I would never got to see them. I would never get to hold them. Kristen gave you life. Absolutely. And, and that is connected to the Transplant Games of America, this medal. Talk about it. That's a gold medal in golf. And every two years, and this year, 2014, there's going to be the Transplant Games of America. It's going to be held uh, this year, 2014, coming up in uh, Houston, Texas. Right. And Team Liberty, which is part of the Sherry Network, we, we celebrate our donors, what they did for us, and we try to do through these games, which is nationally, there's every state in the United States is there, and we promote uh, transplants and donor awareness throughout the whole country and, and throughout Tristan, the world. And Tristan was a basketball player. Yes, she was. And so therefore? Uh, back my first transplant <laughs> games, and in, in, let's see, four years ago, right. I was on the basketball team. I played a little <laughs> basketball in my, in my life, and the first medal we won in uh, basketball, and I have it on the quilt for her. Wow. She was a star basketball player at Jackson Memorial High School. Um, let me ask you something. Michael, in the minute we have left real quick, what do you want to say to folks watching right now in connection to the sharing network? What do you want people to do? I want them to find out, call up, go to the website, and please sign up to be a donor. Sign up to be a donor. Why? Why? Because you're, you signing up will help save somebody else's life. There are thousands of people across the state, hundreds of thousands, thousands. across the, uh, the, the nation, right? 5,000 in New Jersey, 110,000 Americans currently waiting for life-saving organs. We need people to do this. Absolutely. And it's such a rare thing. It's less than 1% of everybody who signs up to be a donor, less than 1% actually become a donor. 
That's how rare it is. And my one daughter really took this cause up. Now she works for the sharing network as a hospital service manager and actually takes care of the hospital where Kristen was being taken care of. You're not just a great person, but a great representative of this organization. And we thank also Kristen for doing what she did. Um, um, she'll be missed, but her life lives on. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Thank you very much for having us and putting the message out. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, the Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Cone Resnick, and by MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. This program has been made possible in part by PSE&G. The eyes of the world will be on us when tens of thousands of people descend upon New Jersey for the 2014 Special Olympics USA Games. What this event will do is to place an absolute spotlight on that which makes New Jersey the greatest, and that is the human spirit. The Games will change the perception people have of individuals with intellectual disabilities, bring an influx of investment to New Jersey, and create a culture of acceptance in our communities. PSE&G, proud to support the 2014 Special Olympics USA Games.